What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Her Business Podcast. My name is Ferris Shry, and today my guest, ooh, ooh, I have a special one today. He is Ziad Zizo Al Mayouf, 3 and 0 pro out of Saudi Arabia, currently joining us from the rainy Florida. How we doing today, champ? All good, all good, Ferris, man. It's nice to meet you. We've been trying to get on this podcast for some time, you know, trying to get our times together. But now we're finally on it. We're here, man. We're here. And it, and it's no better time than right now, right? As uh, I think you said before on, a, on one of your motivational posts. Uh, let's start there, man. Where did where did this this motivational, like this, you're 22, but you are so beyond your years. When did this, yeah. when did this personality start to come out? It, it all started from my father, man. Like every, all the messages I say, you know, whatever I say, it all, most of it comes from my dad. You know, it's the stuff that, it's the tools that he gave me to get through in life. You know, when, I, when I'm when i going to face specific experiences, if it's a, a little bit of bullying or if it's losing friends, losing in a, you know, a, a relationship, losing a job, an opportunity, he always just handed me the tools to be able to get through that. And so when I use these tools and I kind of the kind of then alter them to work for me and for who I am, then I see that they work. And then so I don't really see value in whatever I say or whatever I overcome if I don't help others overcome whatever they go through if it's similar to something I did. So that's what I like to do. That's why I go out, I I put out these podcasts and I speak about topics that maybe not many people in the Arab world are going to speak about because I want to feel like there's value in everything that I had to struggle through to overcome. And the only value is to just share it and to make it easier for people that come after they're going to go through the same situation. But yeah, it all started with my dad. And, you know, I just always aim to be everything my dad is, you know, if it's the calmness, if it's never raising my voice, if it's you know the composure under stress all of that i just have him in my mind mm. i know your dad is very special to you my dad is also very special so that connection is primal it's definitely something super important uh, as a young man especially somebody like you embarking in a in a sport like boxing who are some oh, yeah. of the other role models that uh aside from your pops that you that you looked up to i mean i've all, it's um it's crazy because I feel like we always struggle to have idols to look up to or role models to look up to because we're always trying to look far away when mm -hmm. sometimes all you need to do is look over your shoulder. And that's the thing with me. You know, my role models are just the circle around me. If it's my dad, if it's my mom, and if it's the coaches I work with, if it's my manager, my mental performance coach, every single time someone enters my team or I bring someone into my team, they only come into my team because they are an idol of mine. They are a role model of mine. And they don't necessarily have to be ones who broke records, won titles or were famous or all of that. No, it's just role models or characteristics that you aim to be or you aim to have one day. And every single member of my team has characteristics that I idolize, that I wish to even have half of, you know? And um, yeah, so my role models is everyone around my team. If it's my dad after it, it's my mom, of course, you know, because of it, my mom just always taught me, you know, how to be kind, no matter what happens, no matter who says what, who does what to me, there's always something they're going through. And maybe, maybe this is their way of letting it out. So are you going to be the one that shows them that, you know, you could be someone they lean on, even if it's in a negative or aggressive way, if it's someone that means something to you, you know, you're going to let them take whatever they're going through out on you. And how are you going to deal with it? How are you going to respond to, you know, criticism or hate or aggression, all that? So that was all my mom. Mm. Then I have Coach Buddy. I have Paul Smith. I have Rachel Charles. She's my PR as well. I have, uh, you know, I just signed with Skill Challenge Promotions. So I have Prince Khalid. You know, he's he's like a father figure 
in my team. I have Amr. I have so many people around me, man, that I just look up to in every single way. It's funny you say you're, the guys you look up to don't necessarily need to be world champions or famous, yet yeah. Buddy McGirt is uh, – his yeah. head coach there, two-time world champion. Why was it so important for you to link up with Buddy and uh, train under his lineage? Uh, t look, to me, it was, you know, the story and how it came together. I never ran to find Buddy or chase to find the big coach like Buddy McGirt. I guess the stars just aligned. Mm -hmm. But when I was put in the space where Coach Buddy was someone who I've studied on YouTube long before I met him. I have him mentioned on my Instagram long before I met him, long before I even knew he lived in LA or if he was even a coach. I was studying his jab. So when I was put in the same gym as he was, and when I when I like saw him in front of me, it was it was just I had to take 100 percent of the opportunity that was in front of me. You know, you miss 100 percent of the chances you don't take. And Coach Buddy was one of these chances that if I hadn't built up the courage and pushed my ego aside completely, not to talk to Coach Buddy, there is no ego in talking to someone like that, but to ask for help from others around me, from fighters who, you know, many would say we were all competing against in the gym. I, d I didn't care how I'd look when I asked for their help to talk to Coach Buddy or to sit down with Coach Buddy or... I asked for tips on how they train, how what Coach Buddy likes. So I would even impress him before I went and talked to him. So I pushed all the ego aside, and the stars just aligned where I saw Coach Buddy in front of me, and I had to I had to take the chance because I knew if I wanted to be great, I needed to have someone with me who's achieved that greatness. If I wanted to go through the world titles, the you know championships and many weight divisions, I need someone who has already done that. So Coach Buddy is someone who's been there and done that in every single thing I want to achieve and at the exact same weight classes that I'm competing in. So it's crazy, you know, it's just, a, it's a, I guess it's a blessing. In the, how was that first interaction? Was it you just seen him in a gym and was like, I'm going to go up and uh, introduce myself? Oh, well, I talked, to, I talked to Coach Buddy months and months after after you know i'm i met him in the gym because the gym was very small so the when we would spar i had another coach back then so when we would spar i'd sometimes spar one of his guys so just to roll back the story i was just you know uh, an amateur then and i had just moved to the us covid hit closed the gyms i was training at wildcard so covid hit closed the gyms i trained in my coach's garage for maybe a little under a year just a little under a year and um uh, then my coach goes like there's a gym that's open we need to start sparring he's like but it's a pro gym and i was just trying man uh, trying to get even as close as good as the amateurs in the states you know because in the arab world in saudi arabia or in egypt my mom is egyptian so i was between both so in the arab world if it's saudi arabia or egypt we didn't have that same level of boxing as they do abroad, as they do in Europe, as they do in the US. So when I move, push aside all the years I've been training, all the years I've been, you know, fighting amateur in the Arab world, in Saudi Arabia, in Egypt, all that, all that meant, unfortunately, but all that meant nothing when I moved to the US. So gyms closed because of COVID. And then we start training at the garage. My coach says, okay, it's time to go to a gym, but it's a pro gym. I'm like, you know what? It is what it is because COVID postponed the Olympics for a year. And then I hit Saudi Arabia up and I was like, I want to be the first representative for Saudi Arabia in the Olympics. I want to do that. Back then, there was no, uh, you know, involvement in sports as Saudi Arabia is involved now. Mm -hmm. There was no boxing federation in Saudi Arabia. You know, my brothers would sometimes be camping outside of the federation or the ministry to try to talk to someone. So it was just one of those cases where, again, like many countries in the Arab world, there is one sport that's taking the whole spotlight, and that's football, you know, and uh, it was just boxing didn't have anyone that's ever brought in success for the nation or 
for the Arab world, especially a local trained fighter. So there was really no money in it for them, you know, or there was no opportunity in it. So then um, we started sparring at the pro gym. And I remember the first pro I sparred, he uh, bruised my rib the first time we sparred. And then the second time I come back, he broke it. And so I broke my rib and I couldn't spar for eight months. And then um, uh, what happened was I went back to sparring way less than eight months because I didn't have time because we had to get ready for the Olympics. So I brought uh, a rib guard that you strap on and it protect your ribs. And I went and started sparring with the guys. And, and let me tell you something, the sparring in LA or the sparring in the US in general, these people are out there to kill you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're not out there to, to, because they know this is what's going to make you better. This is what's going to help. So you're asking for help. We're going to give you that help, but that help is, is you know, something else. So I I always stood, you know, I always held my own against the top guys in the gym. And, you know, even if I'm getting my behind handed to me, I always held my own. And I always kept coming back and coming back and coming back. Some, you know, the bathroom in that gym was my best friend for after so many sparring sessions because I just go in there and cry and cry and cry about just like, what is happening to me you know what i mean yeah. so it was just that tough sometimes it was that it was that crazy sometimes and um coach buddy saw that coach buddy saw that thing where i always came back no matter what happened to me no matter what was given i just always came back for more and came back for more so when i sat down with him i he i remember he was just sitting on a chair and it was just a span of 10 seconds where he was alone I sat on the chair next to him, right? I was like, there, there we go. And I remember my knees were shaking. And I was like, coach, uh, can I speak to you about something? So he's like, yeah, for sure, man. And he's a, he's very easy to approach. And I remember the other fighters, I always asked um, Adam Lopez and Carlos Balderas for help. I always asked them, you know, how do I talk to him? What do I say? Do you think he could, he's going to be training me? Do you think he would? And listen, I was an amateur with no amateur background, no extended amateur background. I didn't have a single pro fight. I was 19 years old at the time, 20 years old at the time. And so why would Coach Buddy take me? You know, there was, and, and for anyone who's wondering, there was no Saudi Arabia involvement in boxing heavily back then. They didn't know about me either back then. So I was just the person trying to make it at that time without anybody knowing about any of Saudi's involvement in my career. Even I didn't know that this would happen, you know? So I sat down with Buddy. All he saw was someone who wanted his help and he saw something in me that until today, I've never asked him what it was because I'd rather keep it, you know, to him. But <laughs> I, I just want to prove it every day mm. that whatever it is he saw in me, I still have it. And mm. so if I know exactly what it is that he saw in me, I'll try to, you know, focus on that thing. But if I don't know what he saw in me, I'm going to keep, doing everything right you know because i don't know where he saw me but he saw something yeah he's seen you keep coming back every day man after all those all those beatings and my question to that is 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 how do you come back after taking him day in day out and it clearly affected you crying in the locker room how do you come back why do you come back it's uh i think it's your wise it's your wise you know you gotta you gotta be doing this for so many reasons and you gotta be doing this whatever you whatever you want to do you know if it's if whenever you want to achieve greatness you need to keep in mind that you need to be doing it for way more than just yourself because it's going to require so much more than just yourself you know sometimes waking up every morning to go to that training session or to go to that sparring session regardless of how beaten up i am what had happened to me in the sparring sessions before or how impossible it seemed that I would get better or one day I'd stand my own against the top people. I just always had more reasons than just myself. I was mm -hmm. doing it for my country. I was doing it for my family, my parents. You know, if it's the coaches that I didn't want to let down, my friends that I didn't want to let down, you know, this is the, the way to do it. You need to have so many wives. So when one day you wake up and one of them, one of the whys is not there, the other one is going to come in place. And if that other one is now gone, then another one will come in place. You know, you need to have 
much bigger whys. So you would wake up every single day because every single day might need a different why. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, you can't be selfish and just do it for yourself because if it's just for yourself, a sport like boxing, especially, you know, it's uh, it's going to take so much more out of you. Sometimes yourself is not going to be there at all. So how are you going to convince yourself to push on and find that discipline, you know, because motivation 90% of the year won't be there, mm -hmm. you know, because at some point you take so many punches and the beating is so bad that the motivation is no longer there. So then usually people don't have to look for the discipline, you know, sometimes with consistency, discipline is there. But when you're trying to achieve greatness, discipline is something you also have to look for and find every single day. Consistency is going to breed discipline, but only short term. But, you know, you need to have a vision and you need to trust the process that you need to look for your discipline every single day. Make sure it's there and make sure you find it, you know, because you need to all that comes from why you're doing whatever you're doing and your whys and your reasons powerful powerful stuff and for the people who are listening and are completely new to ziad you now understand what i was saying at the top with you just being way beyond your years man 22 years old and talking like this i cannot wait to see what 25 and then 30 <laughs> and then 35 looks like I'll for you inshallah brother but uh you talked about saudi arabia just three years ago not having a boxing scene and then you yeah. look at it today their host is some of the biggest fights in the world i mean you were just in saudi uh for the for the big usig signing recently how, how important is is skills challenge to you to the country of saudi arabia and, and boxing fans around the world i mean listen uh skill challenge promotions the way they're presenting the fights the way they're promoting the fights where they're not tied to a tv entity or they're not tied to one specific network, one specific promoter, or all that stuff, you know, that makes it easier to make the bigger fights happen, you know? And it's happening in a place where people are going to discover something new. People are going to travel, discover a new country, discover new people. So it also brings that culture, you know, unity and, you know, like collaboration where we'd have to really then meet and sit down and and talk and then you realize that maybe we're not so different after all you know and then maybe if you realize that we are so different you kind of you're gonna find the beauty in differences so this is what saudi arabia is doing through boxing and then it's also a bigger picture than just the boxing it's just really for like the slogan is for the fans and for the fighters and the way it is at skill challenge promotions is just it's a it's a it's a promotion exactly for that. The fans are calling for a specific fight. Skill Challenge Promotions is gonna make it happen. The fighters are calling for a specific fight. Skill Challenge Promotions are going to make it happen. You know, and they really do put the fighter first. I remember when I first signed for Skill Challenge Promotions, um, Prince Khaled, and and he's again like I said, he's he's like a father to me, and he really is. He took me in under his wing and he treats me like family and so prince Khaled, i remember the first thing he told me nothing about fights nothing about what he expects of me nothing about you know how many times a year we're going to be fighting all that he told me i need you to understand something i told him what is that he told me that at any time because i know how mentally bearing this sport could be especially in a, a person in my position where the pressure is immense you know and he told me at any time where you feel like the fights are getting too much or boxing is getting too much, just pick up the phone and call me and let me know like, hey, this next fight, I, I can't do it. Or, you know, instead of fighting four times a year, I think I'm only able to fight three times a year. If you ever feel like mentally you're struggling, put always put that first. And he said, don't ever, don't ever hesitate to pick up the phone and just talk to me about anything. Call me about anything. And let me know you know I, I need to take a step back and this is this is the the part where people don't see you know that how how much mentally us fighters go through how much mentally us fighters go through in training in uh in the gym in sparring at home you know the loneliness it brings P 
people don't see that. People don't see what the weight cut does to you either. The weight cut does a lot to you. So people don't see how mentally a fighter could be affected, especially a fighter that's under immense pressure. And so to have someone, especially, you know, someone who's in charge of your career now, to tell you something like that, that just, you know, means the world to me. So mm. what Saudi is doing, what Saudi Arabia is doing right now with Vision 2030, with the biggest pillar in the vision, one of the biggest pillars in the vision is sports and athletes. And for me to have the opportunity and honor to just be one of those athletes that breaks that international, you know, barrier and international uh, barrier through like my, my language, you know, and how I speak and to just bring unity between the two sides of the world, the Arab world and the Western world. Man, that is so, so beautiful, brother. And it's refreshing to hear a promotion go with the fighter first mentality versus the biggest payday. And often in, in American boxing, you hear like this side of the street, that side of the street. And it's it's so nice to have a promotion say, forget all about that. Forget that. We yeah. just want the best fights. Exactly, exactly. And you know, despite what many are criticizing and what many people are hating or saying about sport washing or you're bringing all the fights over there oh you're spending this amount of money that amount of money listen the big fights are happening and for once in our lives maybe we 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 have to start stepping outside of our comfort zone you know mm -hmm. it's not only the people in the west that when they travel to the arab world they're going to be stepping outside their comfort zone the people in the Arab world who are going to start meeting people from the West are always are also stepping outside of their comfort zone. So how about you step into the other person's shoe first before you start talking about if it's sport washing or if it's this or that. Just look at the cup half full. You get to experience something new. You get to go to a new place. And no matter how stressful it gets, there's always something familiar and that's a boxing fight that you that you've been to millions of times then so if you actually go you're going to be comfortable and not to mention saudi arabia saudi arabia is one of the most beautiful countries yeah. in all of the world yeah man saudi arabia is, is amazing and i love the changes that are happening there it's even better now you know like it's 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 really a place where people could just go and enjoy how respectful the people are how mm. quiet the people are i really need to say how quiet the people are because when i always go for my press and media interviews i always try to tell the people there raise your voice because i can't hear the questions it's just in the culture that respect you know and mm. the the voices being lowered and the the help and standing by each other that's just how the culture is but i don't want to give too much so i leave the question marks for the people to go and see for themselves. <laughs> yeah, you got to go experience yeah. it for yourself to get your right. own uh, taste of Saudi. Uh, but for you, Ziad, what does it mean to represent a passionate country like Saudi Arabia and honestly the whole Middle East in a sport like boxing where they're so underrepresented in all history? There's only a handful of world championship boxers from from the land of the Middle East and your future one. So what does it mean for you to, to represent your people on a big stage? I mean, I get to have the opportunity when I'm doing it for Saudi Arabia to be the first to do so many things that nobody could ever take away that thing from me. Nobody could ever take that away from me. You know, just being the first to do something is, is something that is, you know, a blessing from God. And I always say that the rent is due every day because anybody could be put in the place that i am and it could happen fast and it could happen quick that's just how you know the universe works that's how god works whatever you believe in you need to believe that the position you are in now anyone could be in that position tomorrow or next week or next month so the rent is due every single day and that rent that is due is you proving to god and proving to the universe every day that you are still that person that deserves this opportunity. You are still the person who works twice as hard, three times as hard, four times as hard as the people around you to deserve that opportunity. And I always think to myself that, and that's what always, you know, like I always just try to stay, you know, humble. And I always try to, you know, 
like make everybody feel like we're all the same because we all we all are the same so i always just think to myself if the opportunity that i have right now is given to someone else back home in the arab world in the middle east if it's given to someone else who who lives there who can travel abroad if the doors that i have that are opening for me right now are open for someone else right now how would they act how how many days off would they take how many training sessions would they do how many hours would they spend studying the game studying the goals the achievements they want and so that's what always brings me back to square one you know of square one of working hard where i'm always thinking what if the opportunity that i have now is given to someone else that wants and is dreaming of that opportunity as i once did and so i need to always keep working harder than everybody who wants this opportunity and so to just represent saudi arabia represent egypt you know in my mother's country so to represent saudi arabia to represent the arab world the middle east as a whole it's just something that you know is a, is a privilege and an honor for me and i always say that every time i fight i represent more than just boxing that night you know i i when i box it's just my way to the people it's my way to you know be a symbol of hope be a symbol of you know opportunity because that's why i always say when i fight especially when i fight back home in saudi arabia i feel like a superhero because i get to represent so much more than boxing you know i represent all the dreams that people dreamt of that they want to see a champion of their own i represent that i'm representing you know the whole country and the whole arab world i'm representing vision 2030 or if it's skill challenge promotions, Prince Khalid, the Ministry of Sports, all of that, I'm representing so much. And and that's just, you know, a lot of pressure. And it's pressure that I love carrying with me, even despite the days where sometimes it would break me. But it's pressure that I love to take on with me because, you know, pressure, pressure makes diamonds. And mm. that's what always comes up on that fight night. And when you talk, man, anytime you're on the mic too, there's just, there's just diamonds. Uh, I see, I was looking through your Instagram today and I seen that clip of you and your friends practicing your walkout. And then like yeah. the next, the next clip is you actually walking out <laughs> and you're looking around smiling, so happy. What's that feeling like for you making that walkout in front of your people? The, listen, man, ever since I, I've debuted, you know, thank God, first of all, Alhamdulillah, first of all, and then I want to thank Prince Khaled, Saudi Arabia, the Minister of Sports, uh, His Royal Highness Prince Abdulaziz bin Turk Al Faisal, and uh, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, because ever since I've debuted, and that's what people sometimes forget to keep in mind is that ever since I've debuted, I've been on the big stage. You know, I've been on the let let's not say big stage. I've been in the depth of pressure. How about you put it like that? You know, ever since I've, I've started the journey, ever since my debut, I've been in the depth of pressure and I've been on the big stages because this comes with that. And so uh, I remember that first fight, it was in a big arena. It was the Usyk Joshua fight. Yeah. And, you know, I always, I always, I have a very good mental performance coach and he always prepares me mentally for, for moments of pressure, moments of doubt, fear, all of that. So I was managing everything well in the locker room and, you know, just letting the emotions roll in because what happens is when you start expecting emotions, you, you deal with them better because you're expecting them to come. So that's just how life is. The more you try to run away from emotions that you don't want to be there, the more they're going to run after you. But if you stand and you meet them, then you win. And so when you stand and you meet them, sometimes you don't have to fight back. You just meet them. You let you let them come in. And when you let them come in, you start rolling with them. And that's how you win. So that's what I was doing. You know, I was dealing with the fear, the doubt. But as I'm walking from that locker room to the ring, it's really just supreme confidence. Mm. Confidence, 100 percent confidence. And I'm walking and I'm hyped because it's it's perspective. It's either gonna be pressure, but you also need to understand that. With pressure comes excitement. And with excitement comes pressure. You are never going to have 
and this is a fact, you are never going to have one thing alone. Whenever you are extremely excited to do something, you're going to feel a little bit of pressure. And whenever you're extremely under pressure to do something, there's always that little bit of excitement, but you need to find it. And so I found the excitement. And I was rising up to the pressure. And when I walk out and I looked at the arena, half of it was full. More than half of that arena was full. Everybody's screaming my name. And I, I couldn't take the smile out of my face. And I had so many beautiful people in my locker room. And one of them was the WWE superstar, uh, Braun Strowman. And he's someone that's just always training, you know, always um, entertaining people and always uh, fighting in front of thousands and thousands of people. And so he told me that this, this, what the moment I'm in now is only going to happen once and your debut is only going to happen once. And so, um, I, he told me to take a moment and enjoy it. He told me, let it sink in, enjoy every little bit. When you're walking out to the arena, walk slowly, look around, even close your eyes if you need to. And so that's what I did, man. That's what I did. That walk, we practiced it, really did. We did yeah. practice it in the hotel room. We were looking for a ring walk song and we did all that. And that beautiful video was was put together by one of my best friends, my childhood best friends. And I take my three or four childhood best friends. They keep switching around to come with me during fight week. And, you know, these are the people that I've always visualized and envisioned to have with me. Mm. That's awesome, brother. You take your 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 three closest buddies with you. How how important is that? Like, if you don't have them there, does that throw the game off? Does that is that is that a little uncomfortable for you? First of all, like there are two things. You know, every ever since I've visualized me fighting on the big stages, or you know, seeing my my idols or fighting on their shows, whatever, I always imagine to have my friends there with me too. I always imagine to share that moment with us you know with them as well us us all together and so without them really i wouldn't get through fight week because of the pressure that's on me mm. or my my diet that week or all that stuff without them being there it's going to be very hard to get through and so fight week all the work is done the hard work is done fight week it's all just a week of if it's the press if it's the press conferences if it's the media you know but I like to have fight week uh, in a sense where it it seems as, you know, normal as possible. Because if fight week seems as normal as possible, then I'm going to feel like I'm just going to do something normal now. And the way to do that is to just make my day seem as normal as possible. And that's having my friends around me. If we're playing PlayStation in the room, if we're chilling, if we're laughing, if we're, you know, gossiping, telling the stories... And so just, you know, it's when I'm at the big fights, when I'm at any fight, to be honest, because all the fights are big fights. When I'm at any fight, I'm always there first as a fan, then as a fighter. And so when I'm there as a fan, my friends and buddies, they're, they're there too. And as fans, so if it's the Usyk Joshua fight, if it's the, you know, um, the Jake Paul, Tommy Fury or if it's the AJ fight in London, we always stuck around, you know, other, uh, the other fighters maybe would finish their press conferences, they finish their media and they'd go home and rest. We, we couldn't, we couldn't sustain the excitement. We'd always hang around, watch AJ and Usyk talk and, yeah. and face off. Or if it's Jake Paul, Toy Fury, if it's AJ and Franklin, we always just stuck around and watched them happen. So that's one part. And then the other part is, these you know these friends my circle is very tight mm -hmm. so like i said it's it's uh, three four of these brothers not friends that i was you know raised with that i went through life with and all the turbulences and all the struggles and everything these are people who i've helped and they've helped me in so many situations so the brotherhood is there and not only that every one of them is chasing their own greatness Mm -hmm. Every one of them has the same exact mentality that I do. We all share the same mentality. We all share the same drive, discipline, and motives. If it's uh, the respect to our parents, if it's the dedication to our religion, if it's the drive to achieve something, regardless of how many people are going to say it's impossible, they all 
share that same mentality. And so if it happens that a day during fight week, uh, I lose, I, I lose my why, or I lose my reasons, or my mentality isn't as strong as it's supposed to be, then I find that why and that reason and that same mentality all around me. And so I become who I place myself around. And, and this is to everybody too. You become who you place yourself around. Of. So it's, it's just, that's, that's how it is. P people say, you know, um, and I've said this before, uh, tell me, tell me who your friends are and I'll tell you what your future is. And so this is just a, a, a huge benefit of having my brothers there and my friends during fight week. And so no matter what these people and that close circle, these people are the ones that are going to be there for both a win and, you know, God forbid <laughs> a loss. And that's the most important thing, man, that close circle quick, just give your, your boys a shout out. What are their names? Yeah, it's uh, one of them is Yusuf. The other one is Nader, Mahmoud, and Mustafa. They're, they're okay. these people are in my heart, man. These people are in my heart. Oh yeah, which one of them uh, made that clip? Mustafa, Mustafa. Mustafa. Yeah, he, he's a he's actually a huge social media influencer. This is what he does. Hell yeah. And so like like I told you, everybody's achieving their own greatness, and so but you know the happiness that I I like the happiness that I see in their eyes when. I get that win, you know, when God gives me the ability to get that win, the happiness that I see in their eyes when I do that is, is with the world. And, you know, it, and to all my friends, man, all my friends that believe in me, because it's, it, it really, it really hits different when people believe in you. And it's, it really hit different when your close friends believe in you, you know, because you, you always have to believe in yourself more than anybody else will you know but when you find people that believe in you just as much as you believe in you that just takes you to a whole other level and you know so shout out to all my friends my family that really just believe in me and 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 believe in the cause i'm doing this for and know the struggles and call to check in and all that stuff you know that stuff means so much more to me than people would think that means so much more to me that maybe I would show because when people believe in you, there's nothing more beautiful than that, man. Mm. And, and and what does that do for your confidence when all these guys around you, you're, the people you grew up with are like, Ziad, you're, you're up next, like you're, you're him. Yeah, yeah. You know, when look, when, when I have, you talk about my, my friends that are with me, right? When they're around me, when they're, when they're around me, when I'm going to fight, they say, when you go to fight, you go alone. That's it. Your coach steps out. Your manager steps out, everybody's stepping out of their ring. But when you have friends that are brothers to you, when you have family and friends around you, and when you have your actual family around you watching you fight, you're not fighting alone. It's four, five, six of you fighting against one opponent. And it makes it so much easier because that's just a, one more reason. That's one more why to do it. You know, and uh, I've, I, like I told you, I've been through so so much more so in life than in boxing but uh being knocked down in my second fight uh, uh, you know in a full twenty five thousand seater is something that just shows you having the family and friends there and having family in your team and family in your friends as well is just too many people that are fighting so if i go down there's someone else that's going to pick me up and if mm -hmm. someone else goes down that can't pick me up then someone else will pick me up. I have so many people in me that if I go down, they will pick me up. These are the people that I that I wear as a cape and fight night. I use them to fly. <laughs> That's a beautiful soundbite right there. Uh, <laughs> I was reading uh, when you were coming up. You you started playing tennis, and then you've seen people playing box box, or you've seen people training boxing in a, in a, in a somewhere close to you and then you approach your parents like hey i want to do boxing and they both said no until your mom watched a movie but the yeah. article did not say what movie it was and i'm so curious man what movie <laughs> did your mom see to convince you to start boxing bro look <laughs> the article the article doesn't say what movie it was because it's an arabic movie okay and uh it's called um it's called like uh i can't really translate it but it's called like the black tiger and 
It's a very, very old movie, extremely old. And my mom saw that movie just by coincidence on TV. And uh, she she loves her TV. She loves her movies, man. You know, God bless her. But the like, Musalsal. Yeah, bro. She loves her <laughs> Musalsal. She loves her all that stuff. So, you know, um, like, yeah, she just saw that movie. And then she came to me. She was like, you really, do you really want a box? I said, yeah, of course I want a box. And she's like, okay, you know what? I'll take you to box. And I boxed behind my dad's back for almost two years. He did it. He didn't never. Uh, not until he went to pick me up from tennis practice. And I wasn't there. <laughs> you know? Uh, man, was that film, did it have something to do with fighting, martial arts, boxing, boxing. anything? It was a okay. boxing movie. Yeah, yeah, it was a boxing movie, a very, very old boxing movie. It was like, it was, it may be exactly like um, if you watch Cinderella Man or Raging mm -hmm. Bull, you know, it's like one of these movies, you know, where yeah, there's yeah. a love story and stuff like that. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. And yeah. that birth, that birth, uh, a great boxer, man. Look yeah, at that. Oh, man. Inshallah, man. God willing, you know, it's it's fine. Inshallah, brother. And two years behind your dad's back is impressive, man. You talked about how close you are with your dad. <laughs> how, how is that having to, to put on a front in front of him? He was just always against the violence. Yeah. He was always against the violence. And we're nine siblings. We're six brothers. Wow. Yeah. So he didn't want any violence at the house because if one one of us brings the violence all of us yeah yeah <laughs> gonna be bringing the violence so he was just always against the violence but here's the thing about um boxing and martial arts where i had to you know just introduce to my dad is that you know through boxing and through any martial arts you not only you know not only do you gain the capability of being dangerous, being aggressive, being, you know, strong and skilled, but you also more importantly, so you gain the ability to control it. You gain the ability to control aggression, control hate, control your strengths. You gain the ability to control all of it. So you are a person who goes through so much that requires so much discipline, so much strength, so much you know, will, all of that, but it also requires, it doesn't work if you don't do it without composure. You need to do it all while you're calm, while you're composed, because if you don't do it while you're calm or composed, you won't be able to think right and you lose the fight. And so that's just how it is. You gain the ability to become a dangerous person, to become an aggressive and a strong person, a skilled a person, a boxer, a martial artist, but you also gain the ability to control it and you control it so well because you know deep down you have nothing to prove you're a person who's been punched in the face countless times and you weren't uh, allowed to get angry so what is it that you will say to me in life if it's a swear word if it's criticism if it's hate what is it that you will say with your mouth that will get me more angry than a punch and I can't do anything about it, you know? So all fighters have been through moments where they had to com contain calmness and composure despite being hit and punched countless times and they still remain calm. And this is how, you know, I am in life. Now I, no matter what happens to me, if I'm, no matter how angry I am, I remain co composed and calm. I never raise my voice. Um, and I always know when to be silent. And, you know, and I always know when the best thing to say is sometimes nothing. And that's what boxing has taught me. In the depth of anger, in the depth of, you know, aggression or in the heat of the moment where you feel like you have so much to say to the person who's hurt you, to the person who's made you feel a specific way, sometimes the best thing to say is nothing. Stay silent. Because the best thing you are going to say is moments after that, when you're calm. Mm -hmm. This is when the best time to say something is, when you're calm. But in the heat of the moment, you always regret it after. You always regret what you said, what you did, because it's not you. It's your emotions. Your emotions are controlling you. So the less you give, to the world or the less you give to your body to control you, then the, the more control you will have on you, you know? So this is just how, how life works. You need to know yourself 
more more than you know yourself will know you so you need to have control that that state of mind is so important but how do you stay calm man whenever you're so pissed off you're getting hit you can't hit back or whatever the case may be somebody might be mouthing off and i get it some people may have a shorter fuse than others right but how do you stay calm in those those adversity situations it's just knowing that i will be able to handle it i will handle it regardless now i will handle it both by being angry or by being calm in both cases i will handle it but the difference is when i handle it by being calm i will handle it much faster much smoother but if i try to handle it while i'm angry it's going to be a very turbulent ride you know i'm gonna go through so many hurdles where i'm gonna say something maybe i didn't supposed to say or do something maybe i didn't supposed to do so you know like if i'm calm i always just remind myself when i'm put in the heat of the situation when someone has hurt me someone is trying to get on my nerves someone has already gotten on my nerves i will resolve it and i will handle it in in, in both ways let it be if i'm angry or let it be if i'm calm you know let it be if i'm raising my voice or let it be if i'm speaking normally the same message i will deliver raising my voice i can deliver speaking normally so you know it's just the difference is raising my voice and doing it in an angry way not only do i bring my level as low as the person in front of me if they're shouting or if they're angry or if they're trying to hurt me but i also have less control on myself mm. and i hate that feeling you know i hate the feeling where i'm not in control of myself and you know sometimes I just have to accept that I'm not in control and that's part of having control. Mm. So I'm just a person that always stays calm and composed and I always have just my voice lowered in whatever situation because what is the worst that's going to happen? What is the worst that's going to happen from a fight you had with your friend, an argument you're having with uh, your uh, partner or a situation you're having with your family or a situation you're having in life, just always ask yourself, how long is this going to last? Is this going to last five years, 10 years, 15 years? It never will last that long. You know, it will never really last more than five hours, let alone, let alone five days. Right. So you will get through it. You will always be able to handle and you will always be able to solve whatever you're going through even if you don't know how to solve it yet, that's the mm. beauty of the ride. You go through stuff to learn how to solve them. And so you are not the same person that come out of the storm when you first went into it. And that's that's the nice thing because one day when you go through that storm again, you won't be as fresh or as new. So when you go through that storm again, you will have the abilities and the tools that are needed to go through that storm a lot smoother than you did the first time the first time you lose a fight isn't like the, the second time or the the first time you lose in life isn't like the second time the first time you lose a job the first time you uh, break up in a relationship the first time you have a fight with one of your best friends you know the first time you go through bullying the first time you go the first time you go through anything is made and is done to you so it make the second time a lot easier the third time a lot easier never think that you will go in one problem or in one situation in your life just once in your life you will go through that same situation multiple times in your life but disguised as other you know uh, conflicts or as or disguised in other situations so I can go, I say I was bullied when I was, a, when I was a kid, you know, when I was in school, I had some of these friends that were calling me this, doing that. I will go through the same exact situation when I get older. And I, and I just keep that in mind because I will know how to manage it, but I will go through it maybe in my job, someone who is, is out to get me, you know, someone who's always criticizing me someone who's always you know not satisfied with anything i do it's the same exact situation it's very similar just disguised as something else but now i have the tools to deal with it now i know when to stand my ground when to talk when to not what to say what not to say 
all that stuff. So this is just the beauty of life. The first ride is always going to be a lot more turbulent than the second, but the second is going to be a lot smoother than the first. Mm. And that's the beauty of life right there. The ability to learn from the different, uh, different moments where you face adversity. And, and like you said, you're going to face it again. It's just a matter of time and, and your ability to adapt to it better than you did the first time is, is the most important thing. Yeah. Uh, but for you, Ziad, who are some of the current boxers that you watch and you're like, I can't wait to fight that guy one day? Oh, man. You know what? There, there, is, there is nobody where I'm watching right now and I'm like, I can't wait to fight that person one day because, you know, I'm learning from every single one of them that's out there right now. Mm -hmm. I'm learning from, you know, if it's... Uh... <coughs> Sorry. Sorry. Uh, I'm learning from if it's Devin Haney, Gervonta Davis, you know, uh, all these top guys. I'm always trying to pick up from what they're doing, learn from what they're doing because I, again, I'm pushing my ego aside where I'm accepting these people are in a place where I want to be. Mm -hmm. These people have achieved something I want to achieve. So I'm always learning from every single one of them, you know. So there is really nobody that I'm like, I'm re I, I can't wait to fight that person one day, not because I'm not able to fight that person one day. One day I will be able to fight that person, but that day is not today. Right. And so I stay in the present. Mm -hmm. The present right now, I need to focus on today and I focus on what I need to do now. And this is what one day will get me to them and to fight them then. Mm. And what's on what's on today's plate? What 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 is on Ziad's mind? Like what's what's this goal that you're currently uh, trying to tackle? To be next fight, to be a lot better next fight than than people thought I could be, and that people have seen. You know, we've introduced. You know, my style has changed completely. We've mm -hmm. introduced a new defense. We've introduced so many new things. Where you know, the only thing on my mind right now is to look look good my next fight and um you know once the first few fights are out the way your reasons and your whys you start introducing more reasons and whys and newer ones but this time it's more reasons and whys that are for you you know i want to look good so i have the confidence in my own boxing and my own fighting and i want to look good so i represent my country in the best way possible, my people in the best way possible, my promotion, my family, all of that. So what's on my mind right now is to just become better tomorrow than I was today and better and become better today than I was yesterday. So that's what's on my mind. And that's what will get me to camp, to the fight and to always just, you know, take care of my mind more than I take care of my body. And that's how that's the best way to take care of your body. Mm. The mind, man. The mind. The mind. Do we have a date? Do you do you know when the next uh, time your fight is? I'll be, I'll be back end of August. Yeah, I'll be back end of August. Inshallah. Yeah, this is this is this is where I'm fighting. So we're working, man. It's a very long camp, mm. and this is this is this is the beauty of it. You know, it's a lot of time to work, a lot of time to get better, and just more time to work on stuff to show the people. Could this be a uh, a pro US debut for you? uh where i don't know man i i do know but i can't really talk about it so it's like Fair you know enough. yeah so it's like that stuff you really it, pay, it pays the cost fair enough man <laughs> well, well we look forward to seeing that inshallah one day whenever that day happens that you fight uh, in the states it'll be it'll be heavily anticipated oh yeah that's the dream uh dream fighter it could be present current uh that you would love to train with buddy mcgurt <clears throat> You know, that like, alhamdulillah, man, Buddy McGirt is the dream fighter that I would love to train with. And I'm training with him now. So it's, uh, it's like, like you said, like you see right now, it's an answer that I doesn't need thinking. Mm -hmm. And like I told you, it's someone that I've studied so much. I've studied his jab more than I've studied anything in life. And it shows in my fighting. My best attribute is my jab. And I've taken that from Coach Buddy. Where's your dream location of fight? Oh, I fought in Saudi Arabia, right? So I think my dream location would, I actually have a few. I want to fight Madison Square Garden. Mm. That's like, that, that would be a dream. 
you're born oh. in New York, brother. I mean, yeah. uh, how could that yeah. not be? Exactly, exactly. I want to fight Madison Square Garden. I want to fight in uh, in Vegas. Mm-hmm. Any fight in Vegas, but I want I want to fight in Vegas. You know, T-Mobile Arena, mm-hmm. uh, MGM, all of that stuff. Fight all capital of the world. Yeah, uh, fight capital of the world. And uh, I want to have a fight next to the pyramids in Egypt. Mm. That's that's the real dream fight, mm. you know. You know, bring 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 something big next to a monumental place like you know Egypt and the pyramids. That's that would be something great. You no, know? that'd be insane, brother. I mean, have they ever hosted a boxing event there? Uh, they haven't. They haven't. So I really want to do something like this. And you know, but my dream fights again. This would be because you know this would mean the world to my mom. If I if I, if I would do fight at the pyramids where she's from, you know that would mean the world to my mom, and that's why I would want to do it. But again, fighting in Saudi Arabia is is always just a superhero's homecoming, and that's what means the most. Mm-hmm. Inshallah, brother. Well, I look forward to seeing it all come to fruition. Good luck in camp for the for the few weeks that you got left. It was a pleasure meeting you. You are you are well beyond the years, my man. And I can't wait to see what it looks like for you in five, ten. And and, <laughs> and I'm gonna enjoy the journey with you, man. Thank you for coming on, brother. And we'll talk soon. I appreciate that.